Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us right here on Midday Kentucky on what is Friday, the day before the weekend, and there's been a little bit of rain forecast. But it's warmer than it's been. Well, it's warm outside, and I say that because, again, on the balcony, and I was like, well, I don't even put my shoes on. It's not even <laughs> cold. And I you, you told us this week that you don't even wear socks when it is never cold. Never wear so socks. Never. Ever, ever, ever. So but I was about to say to you that I was standing on the balcony thinking to myself, I sound like... um. What's that woman with the long hair in that play? Rapunzel. Rapunzel, when I say standing on the balcony. Um, I was standing there thinking, oh, it's going to rain because it's too warm for this time of the year. And That's you the country <laughs> bones coming out in me. Well, uh, can we just go back to the Rapunzel? Are you waiting to be rescued? Is this like a Always. hidden... Always. Every day of my life. Who wants to one, rescue me? One day, Troy. One, one day. day. <laughs> um, I was just going through this and I got sidetracked. And I picked up the wrong script, so I'm going to wing it, everyone. I'm looking at this thinking, no, that's not who I'm talking about right now. That's okay. But anyway, I do have to show you something. It shows that we're tough in Australia. How would you feel if you woke up to a 13-foot python? You heard me, a python in your bed. Now, that's what happened to a 25-year-old in Australia. Look at the size Ugh. of that bloody snake. Ugh. Huh? I don't even care how big it is. Any snake in the bed is like my worst nightmare. And... <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, do p pythons crush you? They Don't they wrap themselves yeah, around they, you they and kill you? Yeah, they constrict you. And I'm just trying to, are they a restrictor? Oh, he, they're getting... Yeah, they're putting him in the bin. Look yeah. at that. This is, okay, this honestly, and I don't have a problem with snakes. Can I just, can I point out the obvious thing here? Yes. Why would one have tiles in their bedroom on the floor? Maybe they live on a beach house. <laughs> and I'm more concerned about that than the snake. But that's because you're just, I feel like you're blocking out the snake. Because you don't even like snakes to begin with. So no, I no, but the thing is, is I, when I say I grew up with snakes, I grew up with them around the house and in the stables. We had carpet snakes. Yeah, we ha I mean, I'm in Florida. We have every kind yeah. of snake you can think of. Look, but I don't want them in my bed. I don't want any 30 because this is anything why. in my bed. Well, listen, they're going to go towards you because they want your warmth. And then you wake up with this... Ah! Yeah, oh. I don't like the sound of that. I mean, I know that... The funny thing is, it's actually summer in Australia. So I wonder when this video was. Maybe, hopefully it was a w only a week old. Uh, it doesn't matter when that was. It's not good, everyone. Any but, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have had snakes in their yeah. bed, but... I actually, those. last night, was told about a, a friend of mine that I knew a few years ago in Utah had suddenly died in a heart, uh, having a heart attack. Uh, 51. Wow. Okay. That's young. Th now, the reason why I'm saying that because of this next story, do you know when it comes to heart attacks, it will mostly happen on Christmas Eve? A new study says Christmas Eve increases the risk of a heart attack. Researchers say this is probably due to the added stress that the holiday bring, and they say it peaks at 37%. At uh, guess what time, everyone? 10 p.m. Is that just crazy how they know that? However, Christmas Eve is not the only guilt, guilty time slot. Other times include New Year, celebrations, midsummer holidays, and 8 a.m. on Monday mornings. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I think that... I'm, not, I'm trying not to laugh at this, and I'm not, why have we got this B-roll? Is it for I shopping? <laughs> I like the little kid on Santa's lap. That oh, is okay, stressful. holiday <laughs> stress. Okay, I got it now. I'm like... Yeah, well, th I think having the snake in the bed would be more apt to give me a heart attack. But stress obviously leads to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, holidays are stressful. That's, I have to tell you, people, you allow yourself to be stressed for it. When I say that, and I mean, you know, if you're going to be frazzled, disinvite a couple of people. Do you know what I mean? It's like, very zen of you. Uh, no, I just, look, I've never really had big Christmas parties for this reason. Because you don't want a heart I attack. Just, <laughs> I don't want a heart attack. But I also think, why stress yourself out? I used to, s I used to have um, Christmas Eve in Australia, of course, as we all do, after my shops were closed. And I would go and buy, you know those lobster tails? Yes. So I'd go and buy some fresh lobster tails and some brown bread rolls and put them in the microwave for 10 seconds with lots of butter and put the lobster roll in it. I was so peaceful and I thought, I could sit here for days Just eating by this. yourself? Very happy. And then on Christmas Day, I'd have to go to a function that friends, and they're all friends, so it was always nice to go. But I used to watch everyone, and they're all family, I wasn't. They're all frazzled the whole time. And I thought to myself when I was reading this story, I thought, why put yourself through it? Well, I mean, just go into any store or drive on any road around the holidays, and people are crazy. It's bringing out some bad things. Well, I just saw a woman on the news last holiday. night that went crazy 
at these traffic lights and he got out, got out of the car and started smashing this woman's car up with a hammer. Well, what I find interesting is who has a hammer on the passenger yeah, I seat? I was just wondering. I just, I'm just sitting there going, then this other man. Just in case. This other man. This is what I'm saying about this time of the year. There was another video of a man walking across the road and the guy is obviously videoing. So he must have beeped the horn or something happened. Well, the guy got so angry, starts banging on the bonnet of the car and then starts to walk off and runs straight into the street pole and then comes back and starts abusing the driver of the car again. What is wrong with these people? I don't know. I don't get that frazzled. Well, Everyone gets frazzled at me when I'm driving. I'm, I'm like Mr. Magoo. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> with no socks yeah, and driving yeah. shoes. And literally, I wish I had... Um, glasses sometimes because I can't see half the things I'm looking at. That's um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now that you just made that anyway, clear. Anyway, <laughs> tell us what you think about these heart attack story, and we shouldn't laugh about that. No. But I'm just saying. But what about Monday your morning? Stress. I mean, Monday. yeah. No matter what, it's. it's I get stress. it about quarter to twelve. I, all day Monday. I, I'll, I mean, come on now. <laughs> Not gonna get myself. Tell in us trouble. what you think. Head over to Facebook. For centuries, man has been trying to achieve immortality. But are the elites in Silicon Valley getting closer and closer to this goal? People are trying to things like cell injections to make tissue more rejuvenated and magnetic chairs to increase their blood flow. Things like these are known as biohacks. And most of the time when it comes to biohacks, experts don't consider the double-edged sword to each hack. Well, for example, there is a belief that cold showers activate your metabolism and decrease inflammation. I believe that too. But low temperatures can constrict your your blood vessels increase blood pressure and increase your chance of getting infection. That's interesting. I mm -hmm. didn't know that. It feels like the closest we can get to immortality at this point is through, oh, lovely, a brain <laughs> machine interface that combines us with technology. This is already in the beginning stages with things like brain implants, which allow disabled people to control robots and computers remotely. And if this keeps going, we could end up communicating with each other telepathically. Well, I already feel like I do that with some people. Do you? Yeah. Can they you say, you didn't tell me that. I said, but I was thinking it. Well, did, could they read your mind? Well, that's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> The wires get a little cross there. <laughs> I'm like, no, fault. I swear I told you. And then Because like, I thought about it. And I'm like, you know, D's, I'm like, D, what camera am I on? And he's like, yeah, I'm on three. See. Anyway. You don't have to um, take that. I just think to myself, would I like to live forever? I don't think so. No, I don't Number think so. Number one, also, either. I don't think I'd have enough money to no. live a nice life. Yeah, because it leads to so many other Imagine issues. You, you could keep working. Well, would I you live in, like, a robot sphere? Could you imagine in 50 years? Let's just say, in 50, if this was true, we could do that. And I chose to do that. Sure. But you did it. So in 50 years... Oh, yeah. I'd st I could be sitting here, still looking like this, and talking on midday, and then have 20 co-hosts over those 50 yeah. years. How strange would, would that you, be? Uh, I mean... Every 10 years, I'd get a new audience. Because new ones were coming through. Would you? I, I don't know. There's so much to this. Oh, well, our, our director just said it's a hologram of whom? Oh, Tupac. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, yes. Well, speaking of holograms, there was a hologram in Dollywood, which you will see on Monday on the show. Don't forget, we've got that great prize giving away. How do you feel about brain implants? Sometimes I think it's people <laughs> Just, need you know, that's a real easy topic. Yeah. You're at dinner. Like, please. So. <laughs> that, I'm sure we all think a few people need them in our lives. That is true. Yeah, let's move on. You're probably familiar with the idea that wisdom comes with age, but did you know that happiness does too? Researchers show that the older you get, the more content and self-assured you actually are. In a recent study, people in their 60s were happier than those who were younger. While we don't get the secret, here are a list of factors that may help. What's the first one, darling? Older people have better mental health. People in their 20s and 30s had higher levels of depression. Okay, see this one gets me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how a 20 year old can have um, signs of mental health. Um, Social media. Oh, okay. See, well, even, you have a lot I to live up to. I didn't think of that. You're young, you're insecure, you're still trying to keep up with, I don't at, think it's a joke. At 20 anymore. I had three salons. At 24. So at 21, I bought my, and not everyone is a high achiever. 
Well, it's, I, mean? it's, I don't even know if it's that because, I mean, there's some 20 year olds who graduated college by the time yeah. they're 20 and are doctor. You know, I don't know if they're I doctors, don't, I don't get it. I don't get that one. What's it's, the second one? I think one? it's insecurity. Yeah, uh, your life that. is likely more stable the older you get. Yeah. Mm, eh, okay. Maybe. <laughs> Unless you go through divorce or. Some stuff. Yeah. All right. Happiness now means yeah. being content with what you have, and those times are peaceful, calm, or relaxed. Is that saying because they can't get up and do stuff? I don't know wrong. about that one. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, one. and the fourth one is your brain might be wired to fewer negative emotion responses, emotional responses, I should say, as you age. Researchers suggest that reactions subdued as you get older. That I believe. Well, and I think too. You I'm just waiting for that day. You've been me too. You've been through <laughs> so much at this point in your life. You're not going to get as worked up about issues. You realize they either work themselves out or that it's not worth worrying about. It's experience. Yep, I'm, I'm like, you know, who doesn't listen to their nonna and nonna? Oh, well, grandmother, grandfather. Who doesn't listen to their pops, on, you know, sitting on the back stoop? Sure. You know, they always had great sound advice. Um, I used to love coming home and listening to nonna. I think they, while we're they picking just the ends care of the less. Beans off. It's, you, they're not as worried. It talks in here that 20s and 30s are high rates of depression because you're still kind of figuring yourself I get, out. I get where I didn't think of that. It I says you're happiest in your 60s. That's yeah. where it's kind of at that peak. <coughs> well, you're on the verge of retiring. <laughs> well, I don't know. What I just saw 70 is out. the new 40. So, yeah, and if you lived forever, what, what? How would this throw true. a wrench or a hammer? Hey, in very that? quickly, we've got to give a shout out to Anthony Smallwood. Get out of the bathrobe and have a shower, my friend. <laughs> it was telling me that earlier on. Break I don't ups know what's going on. Breakups are hard and being dumped is a horrible feeling. It's not easy for either person involved, but if you're the one making the move, there are a list of things you can do to help ease the pain on both sides. What is the first one? Tell the truth, but as, what is it, Bobby? Who sings that song, Don't Be Cruel? Don't be cruel. I don't know. New Bobby edition. What's his name? Why can't I think? Bobby of it? Brown. Yep. There you go. Don't be cruel. You owe it to them to explain why, but there is a nice way to say it. Can I just say the only reason why I knew that answer is because someone was mouthing it to me. I don't know, actually know one. How Bobby sad Brown is that? I go with you. Don't. No. Oh my gosh. Okay. Correct. Number two is do it to f do it face to face. In fact, the best place to do it is in the privacy of their home, not your oh. Well, it's to make them feel comfortable. Well, no, because then you can escape. Once you do. <laughs> no, here's the thing. I do believe, I want to say this. I have had breakups. You know, I have been in relationships. I know that's hard to believe. Um, but the more you know. And I've never had someone break up with me over text or um, in an unflattering way. It's always been very civil. That's good. Yeah. That's really like good. Like court order papers or <laughs> restraining know. orders. Everything is laid out very clearly. Yeah. The lawyers have said, Troy, you've split up. This is what it's costing. Oh, okay. Did it happen in your own home? <laughs> I, well, I understand you know, that. There's two, I've got a story, but I'm not going to share it. I want you to today. share it. Not today. What, is it about breakups? The, yes. Be cousins. sure. Okay, what's this one? Be sure you really want to. Yep. Okay. Know for a fact that you want to get that you need to split because getting back together can be messy. Yeah, it can. Yeah. I tried that once. Just once? Yeah, it was a disaster. Really? Yeah. Did it last for a little bit? Was it like, you Overnight. Know? <laughs> I woke up the next morning and said, yeah, I've realized why I broke how up long with you. How, how long time? How, how, well, now I can't think How long down, pal, gal? How long were you broken three up? Three years. Oh. Oh, I yeah, like we the break. We were together break. three years, um, and we had broken up maybe three months. Well, oh, okay, so that was a long time. Yeah, and so then I, one night back together? I invited together? them over for dinner, wanted to... Did you pick some lobster tails? No. <laughs> um, I think it might have been some pasta or something, you know, something homey. Um, and I do remember, you know, they stayed over, and nothing major happened, if you no, know what I mean. We don't know these yeah, details. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I woke up the next morning, and I thought, why did I... What am I doing? And so you ended Why? it? Immediately. I just hopped in the shower and said, see you later. Was he heartbroken? I don't know. <laughs> but I did it in the comfort of my own home. You snake. Like it suggests to. No, no, you're supposed to do it in their home. You should have done it in his. Oh, shit. I probably wouldn't have gone and stayed over if he had invited me. All right, let them decide whether or not to contact you after the break. <gasps> Let's be friends. What do you think of that? Oh, should you delete from Insta and Facebook, should you unfollow? Mm, I guess it depends on the situation. Mm. 
Okay, what happens okay. if you have a, a guy, a, ma a man friend? A man friend. And you are friends with his friends, should you unfollow his friends? Uh, you know I what? Might think of one thing. I hate the whole <laughs> dating world. It's too hard. Yeah, no, it's it is. It's too hard. It is. And there's so, it's, it's cr it is cruel. A yeah. lot of people are really, yeah. and I think social media makes it easier to break up. Right. Well, I'm going to a party tomorrow night because they gave instructions to someone that <laughs> it's now time for me to come out of the closet, oh. so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Like, I need to get out and start dating. It's a rebirth. It's a rebirthing of TT. <laughs> Anthony, you've got a big job ahead of you, my friend.